If the phrase the Eddie Munsification of Wednesday Adams means anything to you, I am formally diagnosing you with a prescription to go outside and touch some grass. But for anyone else out there who feels as though they need further explanation, I am here as always to provide some context. So we can all agree that Netflix is in a weird place right now, right? Because as everyone knows, they sort of used to dominate the streaming space, particularly when it came to original content. Then all of their competitors started catching up and Netflix gained more of a B-tier reputation. You're going there for cake-themed reality shows, not prestige. But there is a niche that Netflix seems to have unprecedented success in still, and it always seemingly comes out of nowhere. Quirky, highly referential nostalgic series that are not quite for children and not quite for adults either. Stranger Things is of course a classic example of this, a sleeper hit that was everywhere and just keeps trudging along as a Netflix money printing machine, flaws and all. And the most recent sleeper agent hit actually came from the mind of Tim Burton in Wednesday. Wednesday is an eight episode series based on the comedy classic IP, The Addams Family. I'll be real here, I actually haven't watched all of Wednesday yet and I'm not super familiar with The Addams Family as a property in general. But my parents watched it. So in the spirit of family, I'm going to ask them how they feel about it. I thought it was good. I thought it was a good, good version. It was a good story. Um, I thought at the end kind of started getting a little bit of predictable, kind of like a, a little Scooby-Doo-ish, you know what I mean? Like, like the mystery van I wanted to see pop out of the corner because they were just going to, you know, solve the mystery. I liked the whole thing. I thought Wednesday was fantastic. I thought she played the, the character just like um, Christine Ritchie played it in the movie. Uh, I also thought it was a little predictable at the end. I actually predicted the end by the third or fourth episode, but it still was very entertaining. By the third or fourth episode, not the end. So I don't have as much of a frame of reference for the Adams Family as I think an older generation of people do. Old um, people. She wants. She wants to say old. She no, old. no. Old. I'm just saying. I just believe she called you old. No, she's calling us old. You're older than me. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> Is anybody gonna watch this? Do I look older than you? They'll answer honestly. They you know, are going to answer you. you. Okay. People watch her show. I just want to ask about your, I guess, opinion on the older, you know, the black and white version of the Adams mm -hmm. Family. You mean the campy sitcom? The that campy sitcom on? version of it. I think the original series is because it was really like nothing that was on back then. It was it was campy, but it was a little dark, which you weren't used to seeing on a comedy series like that. And it was funny too and at the same time. It was just time. very it was, funny. It was funny. Like for the time, you may not watch it now and think it was funny, but for the time it was it was dark, but it was funny too. There were always surprises in that in that sitcom, like, you know, cousin, cousin it, it, right, and the hands and you know, Uncle Fester. Like there were always quirky surprises that popped out all the time. I think this series most aligns with the 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 sitcom as opposed to the movies. I think that in sure. in feel. It, it aligns more to what that sitcom, um, you know, kind of vibe was. So yeah, The Addams Family is a beloved property that has had a ton of iterations over the years, and Wednesday is sort of an alternate universe take on the traditional character. If you've been on TikTok recently, you've probably seen this trend where people do the Wednesday Addams dance to a sped up version of Bloody Mary by Lady Gaga. This moment isn't even in the series. She does her quirky dance, but to a completely different song. The trend has taken over the internet much like the show. According to Netflix, and take this with a grain of salt because they are very selective about what metrics they release publicly, it smashed records for some of Netflix's most popular series. And when you think a series is too big to fail, it usually is, but then another form of criticism rears its ugly head. Let's talk about the dreaded discourse machine. Wednesday has gained one primary form of criticism from its detractors and is primarily centered on her as a character. Wednesday Adams is played by Jenna Ortega. Jenna was a former child actor getting her start as young Jane in the 2014 comedy Jane the Virgin. Wednesday is sort of her breakout role and at age 20 all of a sudden, everyone wants to know what she thinks or they're making things up on Twitter about what she thinks, you know, standard gay shit from the internet. 
And if we move into the seedy underbelly of it all, people are diagnosing Wednesday, projecting themselves onto Wednesday, fetishizing Wednesday. It's getting parasocial again, folks. One particular criticism I've seen lobbied against Wednesday is the commodification of alt-girl culture. For example, many users will take to TikTok dressed in a similar Wednesday vibe and explain that if they saw a real person like this out in the real world, they would get incessantly bullied for being neurodivergent and or queer-coded. And I can already hear the, it's just a TV show, it's not that deep comments coming from a mile away, but while you might not necessarily be wrong, I think we all must come to accept that this is just going to be a conversation that we have to have about weird yet conventionally attractive characters and their actors until the end of time. To put it simply, nobody knows how to be normal around the quirky oddball alt character anymore. And if you need proof of that, let's revisit a familiar scenario. Step 1. Relatively unknown actor gets big break in a role on a popular Netflix series. Step 2. Fans become attached to said character's quirky offbeat personality and start projecting certain ideals onto them which then by proxy get projected onto the actor and then people argue about what queer baiting is or isn't. Also, there's usually one illicit fan drawing that hits the mainstream and everyone dunks on it until that person deletes their account. Step 3. That character gets so popular until the character, the show, and by proxy the actor are suddenly deemed cringe because any initial charm has been ruined by a subset of loud but dedicated fans who are often young women or queer kids. Step 4. Profit? The comparisons between Wednesday and Eddie Munson don't seem super obvious at first but their arcs in the public eye are actually pretty similar. Eddie was the breakout character of season four of Stranger Things, probably because character introduction is the one thing the Duffer Brothers are consistently good at, and that's why they definitely should have made the show an anthology series as intended, but whatever, I digress. And Eddie was such a hit with fans that things got very weird very quickly. <laughs> seems to be happening with Wednesday. I'd say in terms of the life cycle we've mapped out here, Wednesday is approaching the queer baiting discourse phase. But where is the line between valid criticism of a show and its brand and social projection and out-of-pocket parasocial shit? I think it lies between the character and the actor, and I talked about this a little bit in my Evan Peters video. For example, fans of Wednesday have been calling out Netflix for hiding tweets suggesting that the character is gay, while playing around with that very idea in their own marketing. Are fans right to call that out? I guess I should probably take a step back and explain what queerbaiting is and how it's been misinterpreted. The term refers to when television writers insinuate that there eventually might be a gay couple on a television show in order to appeal to specific demographics of LGBTQ viewers, but then just sticking with the heteronormative status quo and pretending that the subtext was never actually there. Which is why it's so satisfying for fans when writers fully embrace a queer narrative in a story. For example, Our Flag Means Death and Sex Lies of College Girls come to mind. Where we lost the plot a little bit was when fans started applying the term to actual people, Taylor Swift and Harry Styles being notable examples. While fans have speculated about their sexuality due to the way they dress or their song lyrics, there are a subset of people who accuse them of queerbaiting because their method of self-expression is relatable to LGBTQ fans. But people forget that no one owes you any information about their sexuality. For example, Kit Connor from Heartstopper recently was forced to come out as bi on Twitter because people were accusing him of queerbaiting after he was photographed holding hands with a woman. And while people are frustrated with Netflix for engaging in this kind of behavior, those directing their frustration at Jenna Ortega for not revealing her sexuality is how we get a heartstopper situation. I think the problem here is actually pretty simple. Representation is important. Queer people, alt girls, neurodivergent folks, whoever, all want to see themselves in media without a show necessarily being only about that thing after school PSA style, if that makes sense. People are attaching themselves to Wednesday because they think she's a cool character with a cool story. And unfortunately, in the internet age, that can lead to some pretty strange places. Curse of the it girl, you know? And I know this happened with Joseph Quinn as well, but like, I worry about Jenna Ortega because she is very young, and this is all very new and loud, and I'm concerned about her getting pushed into things she might not want to necessarily do, like, 
I don't know, having to drink heaps of medicine in between scenes while waiting on a positive COVID test to come back. And this is not me telling you don't enjoy thing or thing bad because popular. I'm simply saying that we've been down this road before and I know we'll go down it again. But in the best interest of those involved here, I'd say that we should try to leave the actors out of it. That's all for me today, guys, and I'll see you next time. No, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm just going to tell you to make sure that your room is clean when you do these videos so that people who are watching you are not like seeing a disaster behind you. That's, that's all I'm going to say. Okay. You, I know you're going to cut this that part out anyway, but that, that would be my advice to you. Okay. Other than that, and stop cursing so much. <laughs> I don't curse that. I curse a little bit. You do too. I've watched your videos. You curse. Curse it up, Kate. Don't worry about it. Oh my god.